on block one of generic elective that is Indian economy. And uh, uh, the first block is about external sector in India. And today our resource person will discuss on external sector in India. So uh, before I hand over the session to our resource person, I would like to give you a brief introduction about the external sector. So uh, when uh, the topic anyone heard that uh, the external sector in India, it means the term that is external sector. What is the meaning of this external sector? So external sector is nothing to deal with the economy, not in India, but outside India as well. It means that the external sector is that portion of a country's economy that interacts with the economies of other countries. For example, in goods market, the external sector involves exports and imports. In financial market, it involves capital flow like this. So uh, now I welcome our resource person, Ma'am Suprava Rani Bhoi Ma'am, to take the session. She is from Sambalpur Women's uh, Government uh, Women's University, uh, sorry, uh, Women's College. Uh, so I uh, request our resource person, Suprabha ma'am, to take the session and start the session. Suprabha ma'am. Hello. Suprabha ma'am, are you there? Yes ma'am. Yes ma'am, I'm there. Okay. Am I audible? Yeah, yeah. Okay. You may start now. Thank you, Sarita ma'am, for a nice introduction. Today I am going to start uh, a few portion of uh, external sector in India. As all of you know that external sector is one of the leading sector which contribute a, def uh, a, a significant amount to our GDP. So the study of external sector regarding Indian economy is very much essential. In this point of view, I must mention one thing that external sector is very much important uh, as a uh, from the point of view of Indian economy because it provides not only a uh, huge source of revenue to Indian economy but also provides employment opportunities, um, creates an international image of our country and that's why its uh, overall uh, predicts or overall exports and significant amount of influence on the socio-economic image of our country. That's why the study of external sector is very much important. External sector constitute a number of points or number of factors from this. I have taken the most important one that is the foreign trade sector. In this regard, I will represent one PowerPoint uh, so that the learner can understand the role, the importance of foreign trade, its composition, its direction, and what are the goods and services that occupies an important place in our foreign trade and provides a significant amount of revenue to our foreign trade. So I just start the presentation. Is the presentation is clear? Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Okay. So let me start from the very beginning. What do you mean by the firm? Uh, what do you mean by foreign trade? Generally, uh, as I know that it's a G classes or uh, students or learners from different backgrounds are there. So I will start from the very basic meaning of foreign trade. Uh, so generally, the trade between two and more countries of the world is known as foreign trade or international trade. When we are trading with different countries of the world, it is called foreign trade, which involves the exchange of goods, services, and capital across the boundaries of various countries. Generally, a country import which type of goods? Generally, a country import those types of goods in which are not produced in that country or in which the country is inefficient or the goods in which they are lacking or the goods which they are producing in a very 
low amount which is unable to meet the growing demands of its consumers residing in that country so the a country is importing varieties of goods and services for the fulfillment of demand of its consumer similarly what are the types of goods a country is exporting a country is exporting varieties of goods and services in which they are experts in which or which the goods and services they are producing in abundant amount generally all of you must have known that no country is dare to be a self sufficient one or closed one in the present area almost all the countries of the world are participating in foreign trade because they are producing or because we are living in such a area that we needs a varieties of goods and services almost all of which cannot be produced in a single countries or within the domestic territory of a country that's why we need to export some varieties of goods and services similarly we are we are export in some goods and services which we are producing in sufficient amount so in order to earn foreign exchange we import those goods and services in this way the foreign trade emerges when the trade relations takes place between two and more countries of the world clear generally in most of the countries foreign trade is an important source of revenue and represent a significant share of country's gdp india from the very beginning starting from our independence we have recognized the need of foreign trade and know that foreign trade is an essential sector or foreign trade is very much essential for the rapid economic growth of our country because foreign trade doesn't means the export of goods and services it also includes varieties of technology varieties of services consultancy that we get from various types of countries that is needed for the production process that is needed for innovation process and that is needed also to carry on varieties of economic activities in our countries that's why almost all the countries of the world are participating in foreign trade because no one can dare to be isolated and no one can dare to be a closed economy in the present era of globalization and rising information technology modernization huge technological development foreign trade is playing an important role not only in the economic growth and development of a economy but also in raising the standard of living of the people and also providing an improved life and improved living conditions and at a low cost uh, at a low cost uh, production process foreign trade playing an important role then what is the role of foreign trade why i am emphasizing the role of foreign trade foreign trade and foreign trade because foreign trade is one of the important sector why important sector because it playing an important role the number one role is that we import varieties of capital goods which are essential to initiate the process of production in our country and with the process of production we start the process of development so the number one role that foreign trade is playing is procuring the import of capital goods which is essential to initiate the process of development next one foreign trade helps in international division of labor and specialization as you all know that many there is international division of labor means labor of one country are uh, very easily can assess employment opportunities in many other countries there is never movement from one country to another countries and in this way a country can become specialized in the production of one commodity which they can export to other commodity other countries and earn foreign exchange so in this way foreign trade helps in international division of labor and specialization which helps a country to reduce the cost of production of a given good and also become specialized in the production of that good next one is foreign trade helps in free flow of technology which helps in raising the factor productivity helps us to produce a given goods with, a, with good quality that can be that can be that can eligible to be exportable one next one is it generates pressure for dynamic changes it is one of the important role of foreign trade that is playing in india it generate pressure for dynamic changes what do you mean by dynamic changes dynamic changes means it's create competitive pressure for imports suppose we are importing huge amount of goods from other countries it means we are spending a huge amount of foreign exchange so at that time there will be cre there will be creation of pressure to produce those commodities in our countries which is created by the foreign trade 
Next, another pressure is created to compete for export market. Suppose we are exporting ke goods, but that good is not uh, sufficiently purchased by other countries due to low technique, uh, due to low level of technology, due uh, maybe due to low level of quality, or maybe due to high cost price. For example, you take the example of cell phone. How many types of cell phones or mobile phones produced in India are purchased by the people of India and exported to other countries? Definitely, all of you agreed that. Still today, a huge amount of phones that we are using is exported by India from other countries or from foreign countries. So the dynamic pressure is created by foreign trade to produce quality of product at a low price in our country that can become or that can be eligible for export to other countries. So again, it helps through a better allocation of resources. Another important role that foreign trade is playing is helps for fuller utilization of capacity it increased exploitation of economic of sale it helps to use available resources for, for taking into account uh, suppose odisha has got huge amount of mineral resources but there is shortage of capital or technology to extract that resources so in that case we can export foreign technology uh, we can import foreign technology or we can hire foreign resources for an investment to use that mineral resources to establish industries or for exploration of industrial resources to produce varieties of goods and services. So it helps in utilization of available resources in our economy. Next is it helps. It another important role of foreign trade is that it increases the welfare of domestic worker. How it increases the welfare of domestic worker? Suppose many workers are engaged in the production of goods and services which are exported to other countries means workers are engaged in production of goods and services which are exported to other countries from india if the export of those goods and services will increase definitely the employment opportunities in that sector will increase at the same time the workers those who are engaged in that industry will get higher wage and higher amount of remuneration or maybe living uh, maybe enjoying a good quality of life so it increases the welfare of domestic workers by creating employment opportunities and also by raising their productivity another important benefits of foreign trade that we all are enjoying it created or increases consumer welfare how it increases consumer welfare i have already explained to you that a varieties of choices of consumers is widened by foreign trade in our country by sitting in a village or in a remote area or in a small city we can enjoy or we can use the goods and services produced by varieties of foreign countries in the terms of exported goods in the terms of imported goods and items it will increases the welfare of the consumer it increases or widens their choice so foreign trade is essential in this regard the next important topic that i am going to discuss is that foreign trade is not or the benefit of foreign trade is not equally shared by each and every country i have explained the role of foreign trade but do you think that this role is equally enjoyed or the benefit of this role is equally shared by each and every country many of the countries are remaining silent or many of the countries of the world are uh, becoming in an unfavorable situation due to foreign trade i must mention line here is that from the very beginning of the world foreign trade it serve as an engine of growth means if you need growth then it can it can be done with the help of foreign trade so foreign trade can be an engine of economic growth or foreign trade is an engine of economic growth not only from the very beginning presently if you see hong kong singapore and many small developing economy they are flourishing due to foreign trade but there are certain barriers or many countries are facing an unfavorable situation due to foreign trade because they are udc's or underdeveloped countries they are ldc's or less developed countries and mainly they are non oil producing countries they are facing a number of barriers to foreign trade why they are facing a barrier i must discuss uh, they are facing the barriers because the developing countries or less developing countries are producing primary goods i must i think all of you know what do you mean by the primary goods but i will explain primary products means agricultural related products or allied products 
the UDCs or less developing countries are producing this type of products, which price is very low. And generally, presently, there is a fall in the demand of primary products. So the LDCs and developing countries are not able to get the benefit or reap the benefit of foreign trade. Again, many developed countries are protecting their agriculture sector or primary producing sectors. Suppose India and UK and USA. In UK and USA, around uh, 3 to 5 percent people are engaged in agriculture sector. But still, they are producing such amount of goods and services that will fulfill the demands of their country. Means those rich country or those developed countries, they are providing full protection to their primary producing sector in terms of providing subsidies, in terms of providing loan concession, by providing seeds, fertilizers, easy accessibility of credits and whatever services they need and they protect their sector. So the goods that produced by the primary product or primary sector is of low price or low cost. So the, why they are importing goods and services produced by the country like India where high cost is incurred to produce the primary product. And again, when the people residing in India or the farmers of India or the producers of primary products in India, they are incurring huge cost or huge expenditure to produce those products. They are not ready to sell that product at low price. So in this way, the developing countries has to face adverse situation due to fall in demand of primary product. Second, developing countries are facing a downward trend in wild trade. Means in wild trade, the benefits are enjoyed by developing countries because there is slow growth rate of export. Means India and many other developing countries, their foreign trade is growing, but the growth rate is very slow. Why slow? Because in many developed countries or in the world, many countries has formed trade blocks. Trade blocks means one type of group they, they have formed and the, the developed countries have formed that trade blocks for exchange of goods and services and they will not allow any other countries to enter their trade blocks. So how the developing countries, those who are producing sufficient amount of goods and services will export their goods to that trade block. So in this way, developing countries are unable to make exchange of goods and services with the trade blocks of developed countries and due to growth of monopolies, monopolies means certain goods and services, they are produced due to innovation activities which others can't produce. So as they are the only producers, they charge high amount of prices for their goods and services. So in this way, the underdeveloped countries has to face a negative situation or has to face an unfavorable situation due to foreign trade. Next is fall in the prices of primary products and rise in the prices of capital goods. You can easily imagine that a country who is exporting primary products will earn low amount of foreign exchange. But the same country is importing capital goods, manufacturing products and machineries, then that country has to spend more amount of foreign exchange. So definitely there will be trade deficit. So in this way, many third world countries are facing trade deficits. Next one is many the other developed countries, all developing countries, they are engaging or they are employing restrictive trade practices because the industrialized nations, they are now also facing a problematic phase. So they are uh, enjoying or they are also employing restrictive trade practices for which the harmful effects is created on other countries. So all these are the barriers to foreign trade. Next important thing is, what is composition of foreign trade? This is important, dear learners, for you. Composition of foreign trade. So what do you mean by composition of foreign trade? Composition of foreign trade refers to the structural analysis of various types and volumes of both export and import. I must mention here one thing that foreign trade has two parts. One part is your export and another, another part is your import. So what do you mean by composition? Composition means what are the types of goods that a country is exporting and what are the types of goods in what amount? Suppose we are exporting cotton textiles. That is one type and volume means how much cotton textile we are exporting. 
so we are going to study this thing composition means the various types and volumes of both export and import it indicates the changes in the pattern of trade of a country over a period of time and what are the importance and what may be the importance of varieties of goods and services in our export and import basket means which uh, you can easily understand that what is the most important item in our export basket means which is the uh, which is the item that we are exporting mostly and uh, which is the item that we are importing mostly and in most amount in pre independence era and from the very beginning india's export basket is consisting of primary products means we are an agrarian economy and we are an agricultural economy so we are producing huge amount of agricultural products like jute cotton mica cotton textiles etc so we are exporting those goods and services next what are our import basket in our import basket consisting of mainly manufacturing products manufacturing products bulk of import we are exporting manufacturing products but with the process of industrialization the composition of our foreign trade has got to a significant change the here i must mention one thing what do you mean by volume of trade volume of trade means size of international transactions size of international transaction it means varieties of goods and services are entering in international transactions so how we know their volume if we multiply their prices or we if we total their money value then we can know the value volume of trade suppose we are exporting 10 bundles of clothes one bundle is of 1000 dollar then 10 bundle is equals to 1000 into 10 is equals to 10000 that may be the volume of trade it can be calculated by aggregating the money value of all varieties of goods and services entering into international transactions it includes both volume of export and volume of import for simplicity i must mention here one thing that composition of foreign trade includes composition of export and composition of import i think you can easily understand foreign trade has two sides one is export means we are exporting some goods second is import we are importing some goods so when we talk about composition of foreign trade it means composition of export means what are the types of goods we are exporting in what amount second is composition of import means what are the types of goods we are importing and in what amount so this is the growth rate of our foreign trade export and import so we i have mentioned from the very beginning i must mention that it's the growth rate in what rate export is growing and in what rate import is growing in the independence or during the period of independence export is growing at a rate of 24.90% while import is growing we are growing we are importing that this doesn't mean that we are not importing we are importing but at a very low rate as the process of planning and with the process of planning our import growth rate has increased up to 1980 81 which has become 40.2% because at that time our import intensity is huge due to rise in population low level of agricultural activities and low level of industrial activities at that time india is uh, insufficient or unable to produce huge amount of goods and services to meeting the growing demands of its customers after that our export has increased but import has slowly reduced because after 1991 Uh, globalization liberalization and privatization um, uh, india has undertaken varieties of economic reforms to improve the conditions of our industries and liberalization globalization has improved our uh, international transactions our foreign trade so which has sufficiently uh, favored our export and also import we can't say that india is not importing and our import intensity is there but it has reduced to some extent next i have already mentioned that when we talk about composition of foreign trade it has two parts one is composition of export another is composition of import so what are the types of goods that we have we are exporting i have already mentioned that uh, the share of agriculture item has started reducing because agriculture um, prices or agriculture product has started reduce 
I must mention here uh, regarding our three sectors. I think all of you know that primary sector, secondary sector, and tertiary sector. Primary sectors, the sector which is producing primary products like agriculture and allied activities, fishing, forestry, etc. Secondary sector is industrial sector which is manufacturing goods, and third, you know that is tertiary sector or service sector. So gradually, the role of primary sector is reducing some extent or we can say that the share of agriculture is reducing from 44.2% in 1960 to 13.5% in 2013 while that of manufacturing products like engineering goods chemicals related products ready made garments textiles jeans jewelry etc has increased from 45.3% to 61.1% over the same period one of the important things that we are exporting is petroleum and crude products including coal and manufacturing products which constitute around 81.2% of our export item i must mention here that what are the most important which constitute around 80% of our export basket is petroleum products is around 19.4% we, we are a huge amount or a good source of foreign exchange by exporting jeans and jewelry by exporting agriculture and allied products i think all of you must have known that india has occupied first position in exporting jute we are exporting a good amount of vegetable good amount of uh, fruits to other countries cashew nuts uh, dry fruits ground nuts sugar cane then uh, oil seeds pulses and varieties of milk products starting from shrimps meat fish preparations all are important export items of india india is also exporting chemical and related products in also exporting transport equip equipment and some amount of machinery all this composition of export of india clearly reflects that there is structural transformation of indian economy it means indian economy is transforming itself from a backward or agrarian economy to a modern or advanced economy or we are transforming from a traditional economy to a dynamic or industrial economy which can be reflected by the composition of export next i explain i am going to explain the composition of import it means which types of goods and services we are importing i think all of you know that the most important item that we are importing is nothing but pol pol stand for petroleum oil and lubricants in at the time of development initially india or during 1950-51 india is unable to produce full grains sufficient grains to feed but gradually we become self sufficient in food grain productions and now we are in such a state that we are producing huge amount of food grains not only for our people but also for the export to other countries so in 1960s cereals had got a significant share of 16 point in uh, uh, percent in our total imports which has declined to 0.8 percent presently it is zero we are not importing any types of cereals to from other countries because we have achieved the self sufficiency next is the next important item that we are importing is raw materials significant percentage of import that is 47 percent but now it has reduced india's import basket is for simplicity we have divided the import basket of india in two category one category is your pol that is petroleum oil and lubricants and second category is non pol non pol item include food grain capital goods and others clear one category is pol item another category is non pol item so gradually our import of pol item has grown and we are means it we, we are importing more and more amount of petroleum and lubricants because our internal resources to produce petroleum is very few and again there are certain varieties of administrative issues provision of license and uh, refineries all such things are there so our export of uh, our import of petroleum items has increased gradually that's why we are paying high amount high prices to our petrol and diesel second the non pol item has grown also grown we are importing some amounts of raw material still date till date 
but their growth rate has reduced india's major imports are pol as i have already mentioned we are importing precious metals including gold and silver i think all of you know that india is the second largest country of the world importing gold first is china because the gold demand is such in, in india is that we are importing huge amount of precious metals next is we are importing electronic items or varieties of gadgets smartphones cameras and many other electronic equipments are imported from other countries to our countries we are importing machineries we are importing organic chemicals and another important imports of india is edible oil that huge amount of edible oil are imported from malaysia and singapore government has imported some of the restrictions to that ground another is that we are also importing iron and steel so all these are composition of import it represent that still date we are importing or we needs to produce varieties of goods and we need to take strong steps to produce varieties of goods and services in our own countries to fulfill the demands of our people the next important point is direction of foreign trade what do you mean by direction of foreign trade i have mentioned the types of goods and services that we are importing and exporting now the point is that from which country we are importing and to which country we are exporting who are the consumer of our products and we are the consumer of which country it refers the quantity of export and import transaction of a given country with different regions of the world direction refers to the quantity of export and import transactions of a given country with different regions of the world in different time period simply i must say that it means direction of export and direction of import which reflect the regional direction of a country's foreign trade means with which region we are trading for simplicity i have explained this in a table i have divided the world in or uh, for simplicity the world is divided into five blocks with whom we are trading or india is trading the blocks are number 1 oecd oecd stand for organization of economic cooperation and development this group includes almost all the developing countries of the world starting from the countries of european union the north american countries like uk canada and developed countries like japan south korea your uk all these countries are coming under this block with this block our trading is around 46.6 percentage in 1980 81 which has reduced to 34.2 percent it means this is the block from which we are purchasing or we are importing most amount of goods and services and also exporting first table i have mentioned the first table is direction of export it represent the percentage of share means from oecd block we are exporting or we exported around 46.6% of our goods to oecd blocks clear which has reduced to 34.2% second group is opec or opec countries it means oil and petroleum exporting countries which includes the country like iran iraq Kuwait, Saudi Arabia, we export around 11.1 percent of our product to these countries, which has increased now to 20.9 countries because a number of new countries like UAE is another important trading partner of our country, who is purchasing or that is purchasing huge amount of goods and services from our country. Next group is East European country like Russia, Romania, Bulgaria, all these countries. With them. our trading relations or export has reduced from 22.1% to 1.3% the major changes that you can observe from this table is that our export has increased to developing countries all these developing countries are the developing countries of asia so huge amount of goods and services are purchased by the developing countries of asia like china uh in japan or you can say south korea brazil south africa pakistan singapore malaysia all these are the trading partners of india other countries are also there who are not covered under above the block all these are the export share regarding import from which countries we are importing huge amount of goods and services initially 
at the time of independence or after independence we are importing from oecd countries oecd blocks we are importing huge amount of goods and services from oecd groups and service groups which has reduced to around 27.8 percent second block is your oil and petroleum exporting countries from whom we are importing around 27.8 percent that has increased i have already mentioned that oil and petroleum is our most important import which has increased to 38.6 percent similarly our import from east european countries has reduced likewise the export as the export has reduced to east european countries our import has also reduced from east european countries but as our export has increased or export relation has increased to developing countries our import has also increased from developing countries i think all of you know that china is our most important source of import after uae so in this way we are, uh, this is the direction of foreign trade or these are the groups or the countries from which we are exporting varieties of goods and services and also importing varieties of goods and services so this is foreign trade the this for presently india's foreign trade is passing through a remarkable phase or passing through a remarkable changes now india is withdraw certain types of restrictions on gold import for which india there is revival of trade in india second our export has shifted from commodity composition to manufactured goods our focus has shifted from primary products to manufacturing products and also we are produce also we are producing some petroleum products like coal and other thing and exporting too presently india is emerged as an one of the prominent trading partner not only for asian countries but also many developed nations of the world now the ease of doing business in india and uh, rise in uh, competitive strength of india rise improvements or labor reforms in india all this thing has improved the production of india and produced good quality of goods or produced varieties of goods as exportables to other countries so many developed and developing countries of the world are interested to establish trade relations with india so this is this is your foreign trade or uh, that i have explained foreign foreign trade this much is there uh, i think in your syllabus next thing or next extra next topic that i am going to cover is your the next topic that i am going to cover is hello hello sunita ma'am is here yeah i am here yes ma'am ha uh, uh, if anyone have got any doubt regarding foreign trade then i can explain uh dear learners if you have any doubt regarding this particular portion Uh, then please uh, ask your queries in the chat box so that ma'am can clear your doubts otherwise uh, she will proceed dear learners if you have any doubt uh, then please ask अच्छा लर्नर्स इफ यू हैव एनी डाउट यदि किसी भी डाउट अच्छी रिगार्डिंग दि कंपोजिशन डिरेक्शन बैरियर्स टू फॉर एंड ट्रेड तले आपण माने चैट बॉक्स रे किसी भी डाउट जो अच्छे तले क्वेश्चन कर मैडम आंसर करेंगे ना तो नेक्स्ट पोर्शन को प्रोसीड करेंगे I think, ma'am, you can proceed, um, but it's a request. Uh, you can also use uh, Odia language. Okay. 
by both uh, it is more convenient for the learners that's why i am requesting you okay okay ma'am uh, please start hello yes yes ma'am okay so how oh. hello next ha ha to start okay our next portion that is balance of payment i think another important sector of our external sector another important part of our external sector is balance of payment i must mention here one thing for our learner that we are discussing external sector means external sector as you know that if we divide our economy into different sectors we get four sector one sector is your consumer sector those we all are household sector we called it as household sector we are the people the second sector may be your investment sector business enterprise sector second sector third sector is the government sector and fourth sector is your external sector is foreign trade sector i think all of you know that many people of our countries are working outside many people of other countries or foreign nationals are working in our country so they are also contributing to our national income and we are also contributing to their national income similarly there are varieties of investment activities varieties of services tourist expenditure all are conducted by india's people in many foreign countries similarly many foreign nationals many people of foreign countries or foreign nationals they are also they are also doing such type of activities in our country so in this regard the study of balance of payment is very much essential i have already explained you presently foreign trade ba which is called in odia as vaidesik vanijya means what are the goods that we are imported from other countries kyu kyu dravya seva guli ko ame ayat karu and what are the goods and services we are export kyu kyu dravya seva guli ko ame niryat karu so in this way we are investing our funds if we if the people of india or a suppose a citizen of india have got sufficient amount of funds then it can invest its funds in foreign country similarly if foreign nationals or foreign people have sufficient amount of fund they are invest in our country so in this way all these transactions need to be analysis we are going to visit many foreign places for any foreign tourist places we are going there we spend our money there as tourist expenditure so it becomes their national income so in this way many foreign tourist or visitors come to our country they also spend in our country so it becomes or it constitutes a process of our economy so all this analysis needs to be maintained or all the analysis or all the statement needs to be recorded so here i am going to start another topic that is balance of payment what do you mean by balance of payment balance of payment is the systematic record of all the economic transactions of a country making with the rest of the world during a given time period i must explain it in a very slow manner listen carefully that balance of payment first thing is it is a systematic record clear it is a systematic record of what systematic record of all the economic transactions all the economic transactions of a country with the rest of the world during a given time period clear suppose india india ro ki prakar ro arthanaitik karyakala or what are the types of economic transactions is carried out with the rest of the world is recorded or kept 
in balance of payment clear so i must clear i think i am clear that it is the systematic record double entry bookkeeping jemiti ame account maintain karu you can say that type of account is maybe a balance of payment account it has both the sides credit sides or debit sides for the simplicity i just explain that suppose uh, i have invested some amount of funds in foreign countries then i will get dividends then it becomes positive side or plus side or credit side in our balance of payment account similarly some foreign nationals has invested in our country then he will get dividends from our country then it comes in the debit sides of our country so i i will explain once again that foreign trade a balance of payment is the systematic records of all the economic transactions of a country during an accounting year with the rest of the world clear next when we talk about balance of payment the balance of payment is divided into two parts one part is your one part is your uh, current account part another part is your capital account part clear i will explain balance of payment has two account one is your current account another is your capital account clear so i will now explain what is current account i will now explain what is current account current account refers to all the goods and services all the goods and services which are visible in nature all the goods and services including visible and non visible invisible dear learner listen carefully first i will explain balance of payment balance of payment means all the a systematic records of all economic transactions i must explain here that here the economic transactions jo arithmetic ko karyakalap ame karuchu that is visible and invisible visible means jaha dekha jauchi invisible means jaha dekha jao nahi visible transactions means transactions of mercantilized goods dravya ro adana pradan clear exchange of goods exchange of mercantilized goods that is visible items invisible means exchange of services investment process it constitute invisible items clear so now i explain i explain that balance of payment is divided into two part one is your current account second is your capital account so now i am going to explain what is current account current account consist of or current account of the balance payment is divided into two part one is balance of trade and another is balance of trade of services here one is balance of trade another is balance of trade of services what do you mean by balance of trade balance of trade deals with only with the export and import of mercantile goods what i what i have called as visible item drushyamana dravya clear visible items when we engage in the export and import of mercantile goods it includes in balance of trade clear it means if we export our goods then it comes in positive side means credit side when we import goods it comes in debit side it means all the accounts has two sides one is your credit side another is your debit side so balance of trade can be a deficit balance of trade can be a surplus balance of trade can be a balanced balance of trade means balance of trade niyantiya bhi hei pare jete bele amaro jete bele when we have more amount of import and less amount of export jete bele amaro ayat adhik hue o niryat kam hue then we have deficit balance of trade or niyantiya kete bele surplus ba baloka hebo when we are exporting more amount of goods when we export more amount of goods and import less amount of goods then our balance of trade becomes surplus when our balance of trade become balanced our balance of trade become balanced when our export of goods 
is equals to our import of goods clear this is one account of current account clear or one side of current account next the other side of current account is balance of trade in services from the very beginning i have already explained that current account into both business uh excuse me ma'am ma'am you are not audible superva ma'am uh amit sir madam ko link kati hai lagi yes yes डियर लर्नर्स प्लीज स्टे कनेक्टेड ड्यू टू सम टेक्निकल इश्यू द लिंक विल बी डिस्कनेक्टेड द लिंक इज डिस्कनेक्टेड विद इन फ्यू सेकेंड और फ्यू मिनट मैम अगेन रिजॉइन प्लीज स्टे कनेक्टेड अमित सर यस मैम मैडम को मैडम एक्चुअली ऑडिबल हो ना थी माने कनेक्ट है ही पारु चंदी कि नहीं कौन मैडम को एक्चुअली मो मो मैम को सिर्फ फोन में कथा हो चुकी है ठीक ठीक अच्छे
हेलो सुनीता मैम मैडम 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 मैम कनेक्ट 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 की अगेन तो इन केस सी कनेक्ट करि पारु ना हां दे सो आपन काइंड ऑफ मैम से तो कथा बोंतु अच्छा ठीक अछि यस बैंक से मे बी कनेक्ट करे चेष्टा करतु सो 1 मिनट हम वेट करे 1 2 मिनट्स ओके ठीक अछि ओके डियर लर्नर्स प्लीज स्टे कनेक्टेड एंड प्लीज वेट फॉर 5 मिनट्स ड्यू टू सम टेक्निकल इश्यूज देयर इज सम डिस्टरबेंसेस सो वेरी सून uh or we will sort out this so please stay connected and wait for 5 minutes uh actually uh, ma'am is uh, trying to connect again uh, so don't be impatient uh, very quickly or within few minutes uh, she again joined us uh, so dear learners please stay connected amit sir yes ma'am ha mu madam ko sang katha aitli se try karuchanti acha se mu लैपटॉप पे कनेक्ट करते से हमें कुछ इशू हो तो हां मेल को जाय कि करू चंदी से कहले कि 5 मिनट टिक के वेट करन तो से ट्राई करू चंदी कनेक्ट करबा ओके ओके ठीक है अदरवाइज तांको नले कॉल पे फोन पे कनेक्ट ही छि बोलि के बेटर दबो मैम फोन पे कनेक्ट काई से पीपी मे बी पीपीटी पेजिंग करिया चेष्टा करतवे दैट्स व्हाई किछ इशू थवो सो मो मैम को रिक्वेस्ट करछे दैट मोबाइल पे कनेक्ट करन टोली ओके ठीक अछि अपन को हन तो नले
हेलो हेलो अमित सर एम आई ऑडियबल या या ओके सॉरी सॉरी फॉर द इंटरप्शन आई विल स्टार्ट फ्रॉम द वेरी बिगिनिंग ऑफ बैलेंस ऑफ पेमेंट क्लियर सो आई हैव एक्सप्लेन द मीनिंग ऑफ बैलेंस ऑफ पेमेंट दैट इट्स अ सिस्टमेटिक रिकॉर्ड्स ऑफ ऑल द इकोनॉमिक ट्रांजैक्शंस ऑफ ए कंट्री ड्यूरिंग एन अकाउंटिंग ईयर पर्टिकुलरली ड्यूरिंग वन फाइनेंशियल ईयर व्हाट आर द ट्रांजैक्शंस हेल्ड बिटवीन a country with the rest of the world is kept recorded and all that records are systematically arranged in our balance of payment account so when we talk about balance of payment account balance of payment account consists of two types of accounts one is current account second is capital account first i will explain current account second i will explain capital account before explaining that when we talk about account it has two sides one side jitte bile bhi hame account ro katha kahu kono si bhi prakar ro account it has two sides one is credit side another is your debit side credit sides means plus sides kyu kyu source through i or hella plus sides debit sides means kyu kyu khetra ko ba kyu kyu sectors ko amaro i or gola means minus sides debit sides so when i will explain the varieties of accounts you must keep in mind that i am talking about both the sides the credit sides and also the debit sides so i will start from current account current account takes into account two types of things one is balance of trade second is balance of trade of services balance of trade includes all trade or exchange of all visible items or mercantile goods jete bele ame kebal or dravya that is visible drushyaman dravya or exchange karuchu export import karuchu that account is maintained in our balance of trade account clear so when our export of goods is more and import of goods is less we have got a surplus balance of trade account when our export of goods is less and import of goods is more we have a deficit balance of trade account similarly when our export of goods is equals to import of goods then we have a balanced balance of trade account clear one option is over second option is or second part or second constituent of balance of current account is balance of trade in services this part includes exchange of services among the countries means when we are dealing with transactions of services that services i have also already mentioned varieties of services we are hired from foreign countries and also we are offering varieties of services to the foreign countries so that account is maintained in our balance of service account so what are the types of services here include the types of services here includes trans government transfer next is your private transfer investment that we have made in foreign countries foreign people that we have invested in our countries all such type of transactions are dealt with balance of trade in services clear so current account of balance of payment includes two part one is your balance of trade part second is balance of trade in services part clear or simply i can say that when we talk about current account it deals with transactions of goods and services or exchange of both visible and invisible items during a particular period time the transactions or international transactions that we have undertaken with the rest of the world so visible items are dealt under the the column of balance of trade and invisible items are kept under the column of balance of trade in services clear this is current account of balance of payment clear second part of balance of payment is your capital account so when we talk of capital account so what it includes capital account includes transfer of money borrowing lending activities of a country with the rest of the world during a given flow given period of time 
it means our country is giving loans to many other countries many foreign countries that are deal in capital account similarly india is receiving funds loan borrowing grant assistance from international organizations all those things are deal in our capital account so when we talk of capital account capital account deal with transfer of money lending borrowing activities foreign investment all such things so this is balance of payment listen learner i will explain from the very beginning that balance of payment means a systematic study of all types of transactions samasta prakar ro international transactions kebolo dravya o seva ro adana pradan nahi bibhinna prakar ro loan jaha ame foreign country ru pai thau ba loan jaha ame konosi desho ku dei thau india is also offering loan to many poor countries many developing countries many international organizations से सबुर हिसाब बैलेंस ऑफ पेमेंट रो रखा जाए जिते बेले आमे द्रव्य और सेवार हिसाब करूँ से बेले आमे करेन्ट अकाउंट को जाऊँ जिते बेले आमे विभिन्न प्रकार रो लोन फंडिंग बोरोइंग उधारी लैंडिंग कैपिटल मूवमेंट से सब को हिसाब करूँ से बेले आमे कैपिटल अकाउंट को जाऊँ सो बैलेन्स ऑफ पेमेंट कनसीस्ट अफ टू अकाउंट वन इज योर करेन्ट अकाउंट प्लस कैपिटल अकाउंट क्लीयर सो balance of payment can be of three types one is balanced balance of payment or when there is surplus balance of payment when there is deficit balance of payment when the credit sides or earning or receipts of a country is more than the payment of a country then the balance of payment is in a surplus position mane amaro ayo bibhinna jatiyo antarjatiyo transactions ru adhik hochi export ru ayo adhik hochi borrow e mane investment ru ayo adhik hochi sei prakar amaro kharcha kam mane ame kam pariman ro dravya o seva ayat karuchu kam pariman ro sudha douchu foreign investment upare then our earning is more and our payment is less at that time our balance of payment will be in a surplus position bolo ka hago on the that just opposite when our payment is more means our debit side is more and credit side is less then our balance of payment position will be in a deficit or niyantiya hago when our income is equals to our expenditure or our credit side of balance of payment is equals to the debit side then the balance of payment will be in a balanced position clear so here i must mention one thing that balance of payment is always balances how mane sabu balance eta balanced eta hai how it balance that i have already explained you that we have two account one is your current account second is capital account mane current account ro bhi dui ta side achi credit or debit capital account ro bhi dui ta side achi credit or debit suppose सपोज करेन्ट अकाउंट रे सपोज करेन्ट अकाउंट हेज गट प्लस सैड अधिका हो गला करेन्ट अकाउंट हेज गट सर प्लस बट कैपिटल अकाउंट हेज गट डेफिट क्लीयर इट मीन करेन्ट अकाउंट रे सर प्लस अच्छी कैपिटल अकाउंट रे डेफिट अच्छी देन बोथ क्या बी एडजस्टेबल द डेफिट अफ कैपिटल अकाउंट क्या बी एडजस्टेबल बै दि सर प्लस अफ करेन्ट अकाउंट क्लीयर so in this way our balance of payment is always well in a balanced position clear our balance of payment is always in a balanced position but this is true only from the accounting sense this is true only from the accounting sense eha satya jete bele kevala ame book keeping bahi re hisab karu ch generally india or many developing countries are suffering from adverse balance of payment or we are facing or we are passing through a disequilibrium in the balance of payment disequilibrium i think all of you must have heard this word disequilibrium in the balance of payment what is that disequilibrium when the credit side is not equal to the debit side in the balance of payment jetiki receive karuchu setiki payment karuna hu ba jetiki payment karuchu setiki receive karuna hai when there is disturbances we are experiencing a disequilibrium so the problem of concern or the most important thing that we should taken into account 
is what is the disequilibrium in balance of payment and what how this disequilibrium can be corrected so uh, i must explain here what are the uh, causes which lead to disequilibrium in balance of payment i have my focus for explaining you balance of payment after foreign trade is that you know the concept of export and import so me mane you learner will clear the concept of export and import mane export kono import kono export or import jodi saman no hebo kono hebo if we are exporting more amount of goods and earning huge amount of foreign exchange and importing less amount of goods mane we are saving our foreign exchange then we have a surplus balance of payment clear but that is not the picture the picture that we are facing actually is that our import expenditure is always more or india's expo import expenditure is always more than its export earning mane amku import upare bahut kharcha kariba ko padi thai au amara export earning is less that's why we are always facing one type of disequilibrium in our balance of payment as you are all are uh, general g learner or g learner i will explain you in a very simplified manner not going to the technical terms that how or what may be the causes i think all of you know what may be the possible causes of this type of disequilibrium that india is facing one of the cause is that uh, rising rising amount of import rising impo amount of rising import expenditure huge amount of foreign exchange of india it spend out ame kharcha konu because we have to import huge petrol we has to import machineries we has to import electrical equipments we has to import medical equipments so we have to spend huge amount of our foreign exchange in comparison to that we are exporting primary products we are exporting some degree of manufacturing products so our export earning is less so in this way our and the main reason for uh, uh, the deficit in balance of payment is that our export earning is less and spending or expenditure on import is very high so there is a disequilibrium in our balance of payment so an uh, another cause may be uh, uh, another uh, reason for disequilibrium in balance of payment the first reason that i have explained is nothing but the reason of trade deficit trade deficit means when our import is more and export is less there is deficit created deficit would a gap create have for that gap we india is facing a disequilibrium in balance of payment clear another important reason is that the earning that we are get from exporting our goods and services is less means our net surplus is less our profit ame ayat karuchu the it is not the problem that we are not exporting we are exporting goods and services but we are not getting a huge amount of profit or good surplus to counter our import that's why our export earning is less clear another important reason another important reason for adverse balance of payment is our mounting debt our mounting debt the ebt debt debt mane i think all of you know that when loan becomes accumulated jonkar udhari jete bele badi badi jauthuba ta rupare ta rupare jete bele goti country loan nouthuba that it becomes debt purna loan ko se repay karu nahi and it's in mane it's taking new and new loan then the loan becomes accumulated and it becomes debt runa bani jibo and india is facing one of the problem of mounting debt india ro runa bahut adhik parimana then on that debt india is paying interest to the deba ki nahi on that debt india is paying interest to foreign countries that's why india is facing an adverse balance of payment situation india is facing an adverse balance of payment situation clear another reason for Uh, adverse balance of payment is we have very many many countries are getting concessional aid initially many countries are getting concessional aid mane arthik sahayata miluthila concession re kam sudhare now that the opportunities of getting concessional aid is reducing more and more initially world bank is providing funds for development of infrastructure 
infrastructure development of social sectors without any concession uh, without any conditions but now all these uh, conditions or all these uh, chances are reducing or all these scopes are reducing that's why india is facing a adverse balance of payment situation clear so, now another associated problems you can uh, um, you can uh, also add that uh, natural uh, conditions are there suppose uh, um, uh, india is facing a very weak monsoon this year jodi amaro e varsha monsoon slow hela ba monsoon is not good enough then rainfall is not good enough if rainfall is not good enough then our agriculture production is not good if agriculture production is not good then the raw material or the industries based on agriculture they are running from losses so in this way a adverse monsoon will impact or create an adverse effect on overall economic system of india which reduced our production activities and also reduced the amount of goods and services uh, available for export so it may create adverse effect on our, our balance of payment then you can say the rising oil prices rising oil prices is another reason for creating adverse effect on balance of payment mane crude oil ra price badi badi chalu je that's why india is facing another problem but in this year on last year uh, the crude oil prices has reduced uh, that's why india's import spending has checked to some extent another important reason may be your gulf war international emergencies or socio economic crisis a country is facing presently the present situation that we are facing one type of social or medical emergencies which will definitely have an adverse effect on our balance of payment situation because it has reduced or it has slowed down the economic activities totally our production process has slowed down uh, that's why our stock of goods and services or production of goods and services has reduced so uh, now a situation has arise where it is it has become difficult for a country to meet the demand of its people nichara loka manankara chahida purana kariwa pai goti desho ko asuvidha hi jibo then how that country will produce goods enough goods to export and to correct its balance of payment so this type of medical emergencies that we are facing or social emergencies that we are facing presently is also creating an adverse impact on a country's balance of payment tar pura account tar somos all things are disturbed presently so this type of situations are also um, having an adverse effect or also affecting the balance of payment situations adversely you can add many other political disturbances may be there war situation may be there which have got adverse impact on balance of payment situation clear so how this situations can be corrected so now the question is how this situation can be corrected or how we can correct the adverse balance of payment so in india in order to correct the adverse balance of payment from the very beginning or particularly after uh, initiation of planning planning start hella pore or as we proceed on planning jete vela ame planning gona then when we are encountered or when we introduced or india has introduced new economic reforms in 1991 जिते बेले नूतन अर्थनैतिक संस्कार आरंभ हो नाइन्टीन नाइंटी वन एंड वी बिकम एन टोटली ओपन इकोनॉमी विद द प्रोसेस ऑफ ग्लोबलाइजेशन लिबरलाइजेशन एंड प्राइवेटाइजेशन एट दैट टाइम फोकस वेर शिफ्टेड फ्रॉम इंपोर्टिंग गुड्स एंड सर्विसेस टू प्रोड्यूस दोज गुड्स एंड सर्विसेस इन आवर ओन कंट्रीज बै प्रोभाइडिंग मोर फ्रीडम एंड अपर्चुनिटीज टू आवर इंडस्ट्रीज तापर मैंने generally what is the general concept that general concept is that why there is disequilibrium in our balance of payment the disequilibrium is due to our huge import expenditure adhik kharcha karuchu ame niryat kariba ayata kariba upare and low amount of export earning amara export earning bahut kam that's why there is a disturbances in our balance of payment so kemiti correct kariba if we improve our export earning if we improve our export earning then the this situation can be corrected so uh, how the export our export earning can be improved how we can increase our export earning so export earning can be increased when we provide 
such type of situation such types of policies or such type of i mean circumstances to our industries to produce goods and services that can be done through your export promotion measures clear we have listen export promotion measures export ko badheva pai vibhinna prakara ra padakhep niya gale we can improve our export earning by providing concessional loan to exporting industries je इंडस्ट्रीज गुड़ाक विभिन्न प्रकार द्रव्य और सेवा एक्सपोर्ट कर इंडस्ट्रीज को सब्सिडी दे कि से इंडस्ट्रीज को कंसेशनल लोन दे कि वी कैन एनकरेज गवर्नमेंट कैन एनकरेज दोज इंडस्ट्रीज टू प्रड्यूस मोर एंड मोर एमाउंट ऑफ गुड्स एंड सर्विसेज फॉर एक्सपोर्ट अनादर एक्शन कैन बी टेकन बाय द गवर्नमेंट टू करेक्ट द डिप्लिबरियम इज बाय टेकिंग फिजिकल एंड मनिटरी पॉलिसीज बाय एडप्टिंग फिजिकल एंड मनिटरी पॉलिसीज how the fiscal and monetary policies strict fiscal and monetary policies is needed fiscal policies means if government check its unnecessary expenditure if government checks its unnecessary expenditure suppose government is spending huge amount of funds on foreign visit or training of its government servants training of its mps and mlas to foreign countries clear so government has to spend on this training or on this capacity buildings or many other programs so to some extent if government can reduce unnecessary type of expenditure then for an uh, balance of payment can be corrected that comes under your fiscal policies if government will improve its fiscal prudence by checking its unproductive expenditure then balance of payment can also be corrected second monetary policy is also playing some important role in this regard and another important uh, key player in this regard is our exim policy exim exim ex stand for export im stand for import export import policy foreign trade policy trade reforms also playing an important role in correcting the balance of payment situation of our country structural reform is needed structural reform that i think all of you if you are going through paper then you can know that a structural reform is undertaken by the government of india regarding ease of doing business mane ease e a e z how business becomes easy in india for which government is taking a varieties of steps we are far behind in that ranking now we have entered top 50 or liberalization or ease of doing business is there in india Uh, yeah, because uh, some liberalization or liberal policies regarding investment liberal policies regarding uh, trade or your um, uh, utilization of natural resources labor reforms all are undertaken by the government to improve the ease of doing circumstances or ease of doing business in india so uh, which is essential for our industries to improve their productivity and also the industries of foreign countries to come in india to do business activities clear then exceptional financing another important uh, um, steps are initially taken by the government are import substitution measures import substitution measures means import jaha ame baharu import karuchu import na kari ki produce those goods or produce the at least substitute of those goods in our country that measures are also undertaken by the government so varieties of measures like your export promotion measures import substitution measures uh, fiscal and monetary policies foreign trade policies structural reforms then your trade policy reforms all are needed to correct the balance of payment or adverse balance of payment situation in a country like india because balance of payment if balance disequilibrium in balance of payment is not corrected why i am focusing to correct the disequilibrium kahi ki mu focus karu chi a disequilibrium ko correct kari pa pai if we are not correcting the disequilibrium then it will create pressure on overall economic system clear our debt will be mounting and mounting we are importing more and more amount of goods and services without focusing on exporting or exportable surplus so in this way balance of payment situation will depicts or gives us a clear cut 
position of a economy in international scenario international scenario re countries are ranked according to their balance of payment situation if the balance of payment situation of a country is good or if uh, the uh, disequilibrium can be corrected easily or uh, then it can uh, become or it can be considered as a good performing economy in the world and create an international image of good importance clear so all these are regarding i have explained the meaning of balance of payment what are the two accounts of current account or capital account of balance of payment then your surplus balance of payment deficit balance of payment and balance balance of payment then what may be the causes of deficit or disequilibrium in balance of payment in india and finally how the disequilibrium can be corrected how the disequilibrium can be corrected through various policy measures are discussed here so thank you thank you all for listening thank you ma'am thank you for such a nice presentation uh, uh, now i request our learners if uh, they have any doubt regarding the topic then uh, they can ask in the chat box dear learners if you have any queries regarding balance of payment and uh, the concepts relating to payment balance of payment then please ask your queries in the chat box uh, so that ma'am will clarify your doubts i think uh, the topic or uh, relating to block 1 uh, uh, that is taught by uh, ma'am is uh, very clear and i hope that it is also clear to all our learners uh, as uh, she explained in a very simpler way uh, starting from the meaning of external sector that what is external sector what are uh, what are the foreign trade in india when what are the direction of trade what are the export items what are the import items all these things is very clearly explained by our ma'am not only this uh, when uh, she switch over to balance of payment then she explained in a very simpler manner that what is the concept of balance of payment actually is and the important terms relating to balance of payment that is current account uh, capital account then how uh, the equilibrium in the in both the account will be maintained and what are the reasons for the disequilibrium between uh, these two accounts and how this uh, disequilibrium will be corrected what are the various policy measures relating to this balance of payment disequilibrium all the thing is explained very clearly so uh, once again i thank our resource person thank you ma'am for uh, sparing your time with us uh, and uh, today's session i think and i hope it is very much beneficial for our learners so thank you once again ma'am thank you uh, amit sir क्लोज कर यस मैम यस मैम ओके थैंक यू क्लोज कर आई थिंक किसी तो डाउट नहीं यस मैम ओके मैम थैंक यू थैंक यू ऑल